by the testimony of if God is for you, who can be against you? Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. It is good to be back. Uh, great day of boxing. Obviously, we're going to get into the tank car. I'm going to do something tomorrow for uh, Joe Cordina, uh, David Morrell. Really, really good performances. Um, it's going to be real tough to pick a fighter of the week on Texas boxing scene. Um, I mean, on 3D Boxing on the website. Um but we're going to get into that and, and, and why I picked the idea. But before we do, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing blog, and all forms of social media. Quick uh, quick hits comes every day, 8 to 10 minutes a day, to keep you up to date on the latest, greatest boxing news and rumors. Uh, all right, let's get uh, – oh, also, please subscribe to us on Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. That's Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. So um, – all proceeds go to autism research and recovery. So I want to get into tank. I picked them. If you if you go back and you listen to MCR podcast, I picked them. Tank to win in the eighth round. Melody picked them to win knockout in the seventh, and Matt picked uh, Tank to win by knockout in the sixth. So we were all over it, but Melody actually hit the round on the head. Uh, so congrats to her. Shout out to her. All right, let's get into today's show. Um, tank Davis. Did what he did. I mean, this was not a surprise to me at all. Um, you know, Ryan came out aggressive, and I thought there were two basic game plans Ryan could follow, right? Ryan was not going to win this thing going the distance because he wasn't going to go the distance. So he had to end it end it soon, right? I, I remember the line George Foreman saying when he fought Joe Frazier was, uh, Joe Frazier threw a left hook that missed, right? Hit nothing but air. But uh, Foreman said it sounded like a shotgun going off in his ear, in, in, in his ear right? And so Foreman's like, I, I have to knock him out before I get hit with one of those. And I, I kind of thought that was what Ryan Garcia had to do. He had to knock Tank out, right? He's got the power to do it um, before he got hit with something big. He got hit with something big in the second. He never seemed to be the same, right? He opened up the first round. He was aggressive. He came out in the second round. He was aggressive. And then he got nailed with the counter straight left. Tank put him down. And then Ryan kind of, you know, he felt that power. And he wasn't really the same after that. He was scared. You saw uh, Melikuziev in the prelims, right? He was very, very hes- hesitant of, Gabe, of Gabe's power, of that counter right hand. Uh, you kind of saw he, he lost that level of aggressiveness. Um, he boxed well, I guess. I had him winning some rounds. The judges didn't. We're going to get into that in just a minute, right? One of the judges had him winning the sixth. Um, which is which is fine, but um, yeah, he he was boxing, he was boxing hesitantly, and he was landing. But Tank was the aggressor, and Tank was scoring well. Um, Tank had him second guessing. Tank had him uncomfortable, and then bang, the body shot comes in. That you know, Tank is so smart in there. And Eddie Hearn said Tank's not smart, and I, I wonder where he gets that from, right? Like Tank's ring IQ is through the roof, right? Tank was smirking, knowing. What he, he was going to force Ryan to open up. And when he did, he knew he was going to land that counter uh, straight left. He knew it, right? And he made Ryan do it. And then he dropped him. Like, I, I mean, I don't really know what Eddie Hearn, you remember when Eddie Hearn said he, he's not that smart? I don't know what the hell Eddie Hearn's talking about. I mean, it, it, it's brilliance in there. And then he, he caught him, you know, Ryan landed the left hook and Tank went underneath it um, with, with with a shot to the body. If, if you go back and you watch the epic Santa Cruz knockout, it's the opposite. Santa Cruz is, is protecting his body, right? And Tank turned it up, right, and uh, hit him with the left uppercut. But Santa Cruz was, was protecting the body. He was protecting the shot that Ryan got hit with, right, because he didn't want to get hit with that. And Tank turned it up and, and uppercut him, and, and that was it. Uh, Tank's power is the equalizer. It's the cheat code. I mean, he has to hit you once to change the fight. We don't really get that kind of power at 135 too often. When we do it, it's truly, truly something special, right? And guys, I want to those who said he took a knee and he and, and he quit. Your body is not going to allow you to get up, right? The pain goes away after a little while, and you'll be fine. Thirty seconds, but you can't get up, and if you can. Force yourself to get up. 
like Barrios did, you're going to kind of be huddled over and you're not going to fight that way, right? So even if he got up, he tried to get up, right? But it's a delayed reaction and your body wants to get up, but your brain is saying, no, no, stay down, right? It, it, it's that much pain. Or I've never been hit by Tank, by Tank Davis, but I've been hit with good body shots. And when you are, it's not something like I'm choosing not to get up. Everything in my in me is saying, get up, get up, get up, right? And your body's like, no, stay down, stay down. I, you can't explain unless you've been hit with a shot like that. You feel like you've been popped, right? And there's, there's nothing you can do. You want to get up, but you can't. So I, I don't want to hear Tank David, any of these Ryan Garcia haters or anything say Ryan quit and he chose not to get up. It's not – he tried. He I promise you he tried. He wanted to fight as much as anyone. Um, but Tank is that special, right? Tank – when I say Tank is a three-level boxer, outside, mid-range, inside – he knows how to work his way. He, he can box from the outside. He can box in the mid-range to get onto the inside, right? So it's not that he's a master on the outside or a master in the mid-range. He's a master at doing what he wants to do to get on the inside where he's second to none. Um, I, I've said it before. Tank runs through the middle, through the middleweight, through the light. He can knock out middleweight. He runs through the lightweight division. I, I, I don't even think Shakur Stevenson can beat him. I, I don't know the game plan to beat him. How do you game plan for someone who can hit like that, right? And he, he's not just a brute force. Like I said, he, he, his intricacies, uh, his ability to his, the angle in, get inside, and deliver the shots. I don't know how. And then it takes one. I, I don't know how you game plan for that. A, a, a southpaw who works the body with that kind of power, it's tough, man. And I love Shakur Stevenson. I, I don't see how Shakur Stevenson avoids that, right? Like, Ryan Garcia needed to, like I said, had one of two game plans. Ryan Garcia had to either uh, be ultra-aggressive like he was. Ryan Garcia's game plan is knock him out early, right? The longer this goes, the, the worse it's going to get for you because he's eventually going to land that shot, which he did. So he got to get him out early. You can either be ultra-aggressive, bring it to him and try to put a right hand behind the left hook, right? The left hook, he wasn't bending much when he threw it, so the left hook wasn't going to do it, right? It had to be the straight right. You hear, heard Joe Goosen say that, right? It has to be the right. And he was able to land it a couple of times, but never really super clean. Um, that So I, I would say put a, you know, Either double double up the right hand or, or put it behind the left hook. You got to get something to distract him and then put the right hand there. That's one option. It's just be ultra get come forward and have combustion. The other is to sit back and hope he makes a mistake. If you take the first avenue and you're super aggressive, you risk being countered <laughs> and getting knocked out. If you take the more passive route and try to pick up a mistake that he made and hit him with a counter left hook or a counter right hand, you risk getting knocked out because you didn't count it perfectly. So it's a really, really difficult thing to do. Now I want to get into the scorecard. Ryan and, and Ryan after the knockdown never really seemed the same. Now I want to get into the scorecards. Someone explain the scorecards to me. How? Why? And I'm going to post it. It's it's in it's it's, in, it's okay. It's in the it's in the, it's on the uh, th thumbnail. You can look at the scorecards. No one scored the second round 10-8. How is the second round not 10-8? Ryan didn't do much. So it's not like Ryan rallied back and, and had him in a ton of trouble, so you give it 10-9. It's, it's a clear cut 10-8 round. One of the judges, and you can see it in the thumbnail, scored it 10-10. Someone needs to explain that scorecard. It is inexcusable. Like, I how did y'all have the scoop? Did you give many rounds to Ryan because the the, the rounds tank one was was clear? Then I, I thought there were some rounds you could maybe you might could give to Rye, but they weren't clear and none of the judges gave them to him. So if you think they were they, they were corrupt in favor of Ryan, that's not true because none of them gave him ten eight, and that's not. incompetence that's corruption the fact that they all scored none of them scored at 10 8 all of them did not score at 10 8 10 9 10 9 and 10 10 that reeks 
of corruption. Because that means they were all on one accord. That means someone spoke to them about the scorecards earlier. Because why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you score that 10-8? There's no feasible way you wouldn't score that 10-8. There's no other way to score that round. And they all didn't score a 10-8. That means corruption. I don't know how else you look at it. There's no, you, there's no possible explanation that anyone could give. And then to think that that impossibility all went in the head of all three judges at exactly the same time, and they all handed in non-10-8 scorecards. What handed in 10-10? It's just, it, it, it's not conceivable. It's not possible. So it's corruption. And I, that's the evidence. There's no way that happens organically. There's no way. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Leave your thought. And I'm not saying the scorecards were corrupt in favor of Ryan because they were close rounds. You could have scored for them, which they didn't. So I, I'm just confused and puzzled by the scorecards here. None of it makes any sense. Let me know what you guys think. How did you have it scored? Where does uh, Tank go from here? Where does Ryan go from here? Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, follow 3 Boxing, 3 Boxing Blog on all forms of social media. Quick Hits comes at you every day, uh, 8 to 10 minutes a day, to keep you up to date on the latest, greatest boxing news and rumors. It is April 20th. It's not April 23rd. Uh, from oh, and shout out to Showtime for not having that main event start at midnight Texas time. Have it start at like 10 15. It was over before 11. It was absolutely my time, buckle time. Absolutely beautiful. Please do that again. Uh, from Texas to the world, thank you and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.